Thank you for watching us on YouTube. But did you know that if you're on the go, you can get the full show as a podcast now? You can get our morning breakdown of the most important topics facing our country, news not being covered by the mainstream media, interviews with change-making progressives, and info on what you can actually do about all this. Search for The Damage Report on your favorite podcast app and subscribe so you know when new episodes are ready to go. We talked earlier this week, Botham Shemjan is the individual who was killed inside of his own home by a Dallas police officer, Amber Geiger. We now have a few updates on that situation. Again, Amber Geiger had been arrested after a couple of days. Her name was withheld for about 48 hours. She has been arrested, is out on bail. And the story that she has been given about what happened keeps changing. Originally, she was trying to get into her own apartment, we heard. She used her key fob multiple times to try to get in. It wouldn't allow her in because it's not her apartment. And then it led to the the shooting. Then it was that the door was ajar and so she was investigating, which isn't true. But even if it were true, <laughs> I, I can walk through an apartment complex. If a door is ajar, how is that any of my business? Doors can be left ajar. But this one wasn't. So Sean King posted a video of people inside of that apartment complex showing how the doors, like Botham Shem John's, Shem John's door actually works. Here is a video of that. And it will really get into whether these doors can be left ajar. This is my key. This is my fob. I turn it, I open. Let me see if my door stays ajar. Nope, lies. They cannot be left ajar. They close automatically, that's the type of door it is. So great job in having that be your second draft story on what actually happened. Something that is so easily refuted by all of the individuals living in the apartment complex where the incident happened. Well, I'd like to know, well, I'm not like to know because as we're hearing from some of the accounts, there was also other things being said that don't match up with her story as well. Mm -hmm. It was the banging on the door and they heard a female voice saying, let me in or, or to that effect. And then apparently uh, the victim's last words being, why would you do this? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they also heard. Um, so it didn't seem much like a, hey, I don't know who this guy was, or as soon as I step in the apartment, there's something else going on. With all the holes, you can't even figure out what the reality of what really happened was. Yeah. If there was some dispute previous to it, if they knew each other somehow from being neighbors, and then there was some anger based off of that. You can't figure it all out, but when someone who is... The perpetrator lies consistently, then we know that something fishy is going on. Yeah. Why can't we, we, we can't come to that conclusion yet? Yeah, and the need to continually change your story so much inside of just a couple of days, uh, that should not reassure anyone about what actually happened there. Um, but I do wanna check in with uh, NRA TV. This is a you know, person being shot by a cop. It's always interested to see how they're gonna attempt to cover their behinds in this situation. So uh, here is uh, Dana Loesch. She, she has a very interesting theory about how this could have played out in a different hypothetical. You know, this could have been very different if Botham Jean had been, say, he was a law-abiding gun owner and he saw somebody coming into his apartment. I, I mean, um, I, there's no, I don't think there's any context in that that the action would have been justified. I mean, if I see somebody coming into my house and I'm not expecting them and they're walking in like they own the place, I, I mean, I would, I would act to defend myself. And this could have been very differently had he actually had a firearm on him. Maybe it would be a different individual. She might be the one carried out. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, that would have made almost more sense, right? Hmm, would have made more sense. I'm not sure that that makes sense, though, because what Dana Loesch is saying there is if he had been a law abiding gun owner, by the way, notice the framing there that to have law abiding in your name, you have to be a gun owner. He was law abiding, he was a law abiding citizen inside of his own home being harassed and then killed by a cop out of control. But no, you're not law abiding unless you have some sort of firearm or cannon or mortar or something like that. So what he should have done is had a gun and when this police officer started banging on his door, tried to force her way into there, he should have shot her dead. If that had happened, if that hypothetical had happened, if this, um, if this black individual had killed this white female cop, how would Dana Loesch have greeted that news? Well, we would have found out what he did in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. how, much did, how many detentions he had. <laughs> what is the, the most threatening photo of him that has ever been taken? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notified of our new videos. 
and catch The Damage Report every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.